and a half thousand fixed speed cameras in Britain now. And by the end of the year, there could be almost as many mobile speed traps. They're the sort which are generally hidden in the back of enforcement vans. Inside Out has discovered extraordinary evidence of operational problems. Problems which could mean thousands of motorists have been prosecuted in error. There are several types of laser guns used in Britain, but they all work on the same principle. Now, the gun works by sending out a beam of infrared light. Now, ideally, this should be targeted at the number plate of a car because number plates have a special reflective coating which bounce the beam straight back into the machine. As the car moves, this device quickly takes a series of distance readings and from those works out the speed of the vehicle. Dr. Michael Clark is an expert in laser technology. He believes the guns can give false readings. Here, the car he's aiming at is 34 feet away, but the gun is registering 89 feet. Why? Because the laser beam is being reflected. What's actually happening is the device is sending out a laser beam, which is hitting the wing mirror on the car, and then it is being uh, reflected onto the sign. That ice sign That over ice there. sign over there. Right. It's then coming back off the ice sign, back onto the wing mirror again, and back into the receiver. Dr. Clark believes this reflection effect could lead to full speed readings from moving vehicles. And that's not all. A gun works out speed by measuring the changing distance between itself and a vehicle. So if the gun is accidentally moved while taking a reading and the beam slips along the side of a car, this can affect the result too. I have here again another device this time. And if I just simply point it at the vehicle, straight away, we have a four mile an hour speed reading. So how can you be getting a speed reading from a vehicle that's clearly not moving? This instrument doesn't know if it's moving. So it started off measuring a little bit further away down the vehicle. Now it's a bit closer, so it thinks there's a speed reading. Uh, it's, it's as simple as that. Now, of course, this is, is very relevant. If a policeman is pointing it at a vehicle going by and he moves it across, then he will get an increased or indeed a reduced speed reading. And this is called known as slip factor. And does that happen in real life? Is that how police use these things? Well, I, I think it would be very difficult to hold uh, one of these guns on a vehicle that is stationary because the car itself is moving. They have to hold it very, very closely on the same point on the vehicle, otherwise they will get an erroneous speed reading. Dr. Clark says all laser speed guns are susceptible to slip effect. So I tried out one of the latest models of the most commonly used gun in Britain, the LTI 2020, on a wall. Well, eight miles, miles an hour. Eight miles an hour. It's that easy. <laughs> From a wall. From a wall. That's not moving. It's not moving. That Amazing. Definitely not moving. <laughs> So, in theory, if an operator moves the gun along the side of a car while taking a reading, this could add the length of the car to the distance travelled. And we calculated this could add up to 30 miles an hour to the speed recorded. But the UK manufacturer of the LTI 2020 rejects the possibility of getting misleading readings from moving vehicles. You accept that you can get a speed reading off a stationary vehicle, don't you? Oh, yes very low speed reading against a small amount of panning. But what you're saying is when that vehicle is moving, mm -hmm. the laser gun does what? It traps out any panning errors. Frank Garrett says when used on moving vehicles, the guns can detect slip effect and will display an error message rather than a false speed. We didn't get an error reading. We got a reading of four miles an hour. Yes, you would, against a stationary target. Potentially you're saying that you would. couldn't happen on a moving that's, target. That's exactly right. But a reading of maybe an extra two miles an hour could happen on a moving target. I think that's highly unlikely. No more than one mile an hour, if at all, but in any event, two miles an hour. In your user manual, you do acknowledge the possibility of a slip effect. You say that the equipment is designed to um, have the least chance of a slip effect. Yes. So you are acknowledging the possibility. You have to understand that that particular manual is written for training purposes. And it's so it's wrong? Uh, it's no, it's not wrong. No, it's not wrong. It's that particular phraseology is designed to be a discussion point in the training of operators and indeed instructors. This is rarely seen video filmed by South Wales Police and obtained by Inside Out. It's from a camera which is linked up to the laser gun. Recordings like this are often used as evidence in speeding cases. We showed the tape to Dr. Clark. 
I've noticed on this video some of the speed readings have um, minus signs in front of them. What does that mean? If there is a minus sign in, in front of it, like we had there, just like we had there, right? That means the target has been measured as going away. But it's not going away. It's coming. Well, in this case, it wasn't, and that is typical of the errors that you'll get. Here we have negative speeds for vehicles coming towards us. It's a nonsense. So, what does this part of the video show? This part shows the device measuring vehicles coming towards us, yet amazingly a lot of them have zero miles an hour. <laughs> How can that be? The real point of all of these is that the data being presented is incorrect. There's no doubt in my mind that in overall terms the officer did not set up the video element as well as he might have done. People um, are going to look at that and be yes. absolutely horrified. They're going to wonder how many times that kind of thing is happening. Well, I, w I, I couldn't disagree with you on that. I mean, I think that's probably right.